This is WCRD Chicago 88.3 FM, The Wizard. We have with us today Dr. Vincent Bruckert, who is uh, also a musician. He teaches at Wright College, Wilbur Wright Community College. Thank you. Welcome, Vincent. How are you today? Very good. We're on spring break over at Wright College this week. How long does the spring break last? The whole uh, week? Just this week, yep. Well, please describe your day job, your music, and the connection between both. Well, um, I teach uh, English at Wright College. Uh, among the other classes I teach there, uh, literature and composition are my creative writing classes. And uh, I'm a creative writer. I, uh, I write plays, I write songs, and um, I really like teaching a class where I get other people to get themselves out and put them out themselves and take the risks to express themselves. Heads up, uh, listeners. We have playing in the background all those stars, the new album uh, from uh, Vincent and his band. What is your, your band's name? Our band is uh, Crown Vic Royal, mm -hmm. and we are finishing up this week uh, our EP. We're getting it mixed this week. And then there's oh. a stage after that called Mastering. But we'll have a three-song EP, and one of the songs that uh, we're uh, including on that, you can hear now, uh, All Those Stars. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, getting back to the description between the connection between uh, writing, your, your teaching, and, uh, and your art. Uh, just describe a little bit in detail about that. You know, when I was young, I wanted to be the artist. I wanted to be the writer. And now... I realize that there's an enormous connection between teaching your craft and your creativity uh, and actually doing it. It's not just simply sharing it and being able to talk about yourself and doing what you want to do. It's about learning how others talk about themselves and find what, what they want to do. And that exploration is at the heart of the kind of collaborative activity that one loves and I love collaboration, whether it's in a theater, whether it's in a rehearsal room for a, a play, or whether it's in a rehearsal room for a band, or being on stage and actually performing. When I write plays, I don't get to perform. I, I get to watch them, but I don't get to perform them. And I think it's that moment when um, uh, I'm writing that is, to me, the most performative. And that's what I like about teaching. It's helping others perform their expressions. You could see the process going on in your students, uh, similar to how how your writing uh, processes uh, progresses in stages. Sometimes you see that. Oh yeah, and recognizing that there's a you know a maturation, just like getting a song to a band, it matures so much and it becomes something else. Like the drum here that we're hearing from Joe is not a drum that I could have invented or programmed onto a computer and played along with. This is, you know, Joe's inspiration and his joy that's coming through as he performs his song. How did you first start playing music? Oh gosh, I, even before I was inspired by bands, I think the first time I ever saw a guitar, I was like, oh, I want to be able to make sounds like that. And uh, so I picked up uh, music poorly, very young, and did very poorly for the longest time. But like, college helped a lot. I lived in a house with seven guys and all of us played guitar. And all of us uh, shared what we knew and picked up on each other. What was the hardest part of uh, learning to play the guitar? Ah, uh, each step. You know, each time you learn a new song, it's like learning the guitar over again and learning to pick out what you want with that. Of course, some songs will come up really quickly because they'll be familiar, but um, the idea of uh, even writing a song is like finding, you know, what is the right thing? What is it that sounds right? And learning to make things sound right at any stage of your musicianship is what you're looking for. Do you first start with an idea for a song, or do you start with a melody, or does it vary between both, or among other things as well? Well, it varies. Uh, the song we just heard, All Those Stars, uh, began with the rhythm, and I think it may have been like 
two or three times I played it at home that I brought it to the band and uh, at the time it was uh, Jay and bass, Jay Ulrich and Joe Scott on drums and we just played it over and over again and I only had one verse and I only had a little bit and uh, that song's lyrics which are still very sparse uh, sort of grew with the way we arranged it uh, and eventually recorded it. I think, in fact, when we recorded it, I threw lyrics, the final uh, coda, uh, All Those Stars Rain On Me, I think I threw them on uh, our singer, uh, Dave, at the last day. I think he got those as we were recording it. And we had, therefore, we had never really played it like that inside a rehearsal room or on a stage before. So the whole process uh, didn't culminate until you uh, got to that stage because uh, at, th at that time you got the title and the feel for the song? Yeah, I think, you know what, I guess that's it. Uh, I was getting the feel for it, knowing it, and then there's just like this enormous writer's deadline on you when you're recording it because you're like, this is it. This will be the way it's remembered. This isn't a jam. This isn't playing it out at a open mic or even at one of our shows. This is how it's going to be. What is it that I... I want to make sure it's in there. Do you mentor students in music sometimes? You know, in my creative writing classes, one, I, I'm probably not good enough a musician to mentor someone musically, but as a writer, uh, yeah, every semester in my creative writing class, it seems there's at least one writer whose final project is uh, a set of song lyrics. And that's nice. happening this semester, too. One of my students, April, is... Uh, I already got quite a good collection of song lyrics. They look on a page as the poems, but then when you start reading them, you realize, oh yes, I hear the melody there. Oh yes, I can feel the rhythms in these lyrics. So I look forward to her, her, hearing her actually perform them. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I know that uh, your the advisor for The Right Side, is uh, she going to be published in The Right Side as well, her songs? No, not yet. She's just writing these yet. Uh, the Right Side, as we're working on right now, Right Side is our uh, Wright College's literary arts magazine. And uh, we're finishing that up right now as we speak, hopefully. When you uh, mentor students, uh, in, you said that you do not men mentor them that much in, in music, but uh, still sometimes uh, you, you do, right? Because I think that you mentored Brian a little bit, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> and I knew that he was uh, very shy, so how were you able to help him overcome his shyness? Well, we all have shyness, and um, I mean, I remember my first year of teaching being so nervous, and which was weird, because I had spent so many years in high school and college acting on stage, and I didn't realize I was gonna be afraid to be on a teaching stage. Um, and you know, do you do I you do you kind of feel what it is that you were uh, most nervous about? What was what were you afraid of? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what what's at the heart of that. I mean, every time you go on stage and perform with the band, there's that energy that you get from your nerves, and I think it's good. And I think it's what what helps you start kicking in, and what when you right when it kicks in and it's comfortable, it's energy that keeps you vibrant and alive. So I'm a big fan of that energy. It's just, when it's new to you, it feels more scary, and therefore it's a negative thing. But once you're familiar with it, it's still there. It still gets you uh, a little uncomfortable, it makes it so that you couldn't you know, be feeling relaxed, but it gives you that energy that you need to be out there and put yourself out there. When you're in the studio, do you concentrate more on performing, or do you concentrate more on performing to the audience? Well, in the studio? Yes. Well, you know, it, it's a fun process, and sometimes you got to think about your audience. Sometimes you're just thinking about making sure you're hitting the beat right, and you're not missing a note or not plucking it a little bit off. I play without a pick, so... You can really hear my fingers touching the strings if I do it a little bit too strong or a little bit too weak. So I'm like, all these little meticulous things I would never think on a stage performing for a live audience suddenly take over. 
In fact, even like right now, I'm talking sitting down. I never sit down on a stage. But there's all those little dynamics, and I've never gotten enough chance to record and be as comfortable recording as I love. But I've been doing it now for a little while, and uh, I, uh, I understand how to think through and put it together just like you'd write something. You put some tracks down, you record some basic tracks together, then you say, oh, you know what? It'd be great if this song had a tambourine. You might not ever have a tambourine on stage with it, but right now we can put one on. Stuff like that is the kind of ways that you grow a song in a studio. And yeah, you're thinking of the audience, but you're also thinking ultimately, I think, of the song and what would serve it. Why do you play without a pick? Does that uh, inject more creativity into your performance? I don't know. It does make my style a little bit different, and it probably does limit me. I couldn't do something like tremolo picking without a pick. Uh, but um, it's sort of naturally involved, uh, maybe a little bit out of breaking strings. I remember back when I was in punk rock bands, uh, I break a lot of my D string on my guitar, which would set the whole guitar out of tune and would make it difficult to figure out how to form chords immediately after doing it before you could get it switched out. And uh, I maybe that was part of the reason because I can be more gentle with my strings than I once was. But I think it's also, you know, just something that's evolved with me through the years and I, I like to get that find, that feel. Mm-hmm. The grain of the voice of the singer, the the feel on the fingers for the guitarist. Could you describe your EP and uh, what inspired you? Well, we've uh, had a couple EPs out already uh, with our singer Sean Henning. Uh, one, we went down to Sun Studios and we recorded uh, some tracks that we were excited about and thought had like a real rock and roll vibe to it. Uh, and then uh, with Sean again, we went and recorded a set of blues songs, uh, many of them covers of Muddy Waters songs, redone in the Crown Vic Royal way. And uh, I think this album, or this EP, uh, is three songs that have a little bit of the countryside to us. So the blues, the rock and roll, I think all our music sort of comes out of uh, the fact that straight up from New Orleans, Memphis, Nashville, Louisville, Indianapolis, Detroit, Chicago, Minneapolis, Iowa, Arkansas, is a whole section of the country that has got, I think, the the spirit of American music in it. And um, I think that's what inspires me about music. That's the music I love, and that's what I think Crown Vic Royal is, sort of. It's sort of a tripped out, uh, kaleidoscopic view of, you know, what the Minnesota to... um, uh, and then uh, Mississippi River all the way down to New from Minnesota to New Orleans. What what is it that is this heart of Chicago uh, and feeds what I as a Chicagoan know as music? Well, we will hear the Crown Victor Crown Vic Royal Rick, Rick, Crown Vic Royal way in a in a little bit. I just wanted to ask you before we do that. Okay. So all those stars, what are the stars in the all those stars? Well, uh, the opening verse is uh, uh, a a man who's suffering. All these uh, stars uh, fell in the sky. All these bars have heard me cry. And uh, I guess that uh, sets the tone of, uh, you know, when you're you're very uh, much in pain and suffering, you look up and it's the whole universe suffering with you. And I think that's what that song is about, the pain. Mm-hmm. Okay. You also write plays. So uh, yeah. do the two expressions of writing and playing in your band ever bridge each other? And if so, how? Well, in terms of our friends, they do. And many of the people who uh, I played with musically in the past have been people I've known in, from the world of theater. But, um, you know, what happens when you're a playwright is the play gets done, they take it down, they put away the costumes and the set, and then everybody who put on your play goes to work on their next play. And then you have to go home, and it might be like two or three years between a play uh, 
if you're a playwright getting uh, produced on stage so there's all this space and time that you know other artists can go straight back to work but me as a playwright well I've got to write the play but I still miss that experience of sharing my work mm -hmm. and so I think uh, music I think it came first and then I think I put it away for a while as I was getting most uh, prolific and most busy in my uh, theater from the late 90s to a good chunk of the first decade of this year, uh, century. But um, uh, in between those pauses, the music always came back and right now it's it's happening in a really fun way. I'm really liking uh, making music with these guys. So you have a business plan to promote your band? Well, I don't know, what the, when we promote it. In the old days, I would be on that phone and calling you and telling you about my show, and I'll still be doing that and still be getting people to come on out. Uh, we do posters, but uh, and we put them up places, so I still like the old school ways. But I would have to say that social media has made uh, promotion a lot easier and sharing things uh, and sharing links to things like on SoundCloud or Bandcamp with my... Uh, uh, contacts and friends and uh, everybody I can get in touch with. Uh, that seems to be what helps us get people to the shows. Well, please play a song for us. Uh, you're going to be playing Eat Your Blues, and could you yeah. explain it a little bit before playing? This was the first song I wrote with this guitar, an acoustic Fender, that uh, was given to me uh, as a gift by my wife, Eileen. And uh, I... Uh, didn't know at the time I played a lot of punk songs and I didn't know any songs that were just perfect for the acoustic so uh, as I was trying to learn what would be a good song perfect for the acoustic for me and my style uh, I wrote this song which uh, is silly it's fun to me but at the same time it captures uh, a lot of attitude that I think I have well, Here it is. eat your blues eat your blues Oh, I wake up every morning in misery And there ain't nothing in this wide world makes me happy And if I find a drink, I give myself the strength but try to remember just why I am here I'm here because of my dear sweet mother-in-law And the words she used to describe just what she saw I was out running around While my baby was out of town And now I sleep in motel loneliness And it's blues for supper at some places But it's strictly blues for breakfast while you're here And when they get your breakfast They throw it at you and they say shut up I'll eat your blues Shut up, I'll eat your blues Well I know there's no hope for me with my history Of ever winning my sweetheart, now back to me Oh, I like the crowd and talking loud But since she's gone I've changed 
supper at some places but it's strictly blues for breakfast while you're here and when they get your breakfast they throw it at you and they say shut up Oh, eat your blues Say shut up Oh, eat your blues Say shut up Oh, eat your blues I mean shut up And eat Show blues Shut up Now you So when I said country, I meant way alt country. Mm-hmm. Thank <laughs> you so much, Mr. That was beautiful. Thank so you. the uh, Crown Vic Railway has not evolved yet, or is there a, a little uh, semblance of it already uh, well, we're, popping up we're, in there? We're finishing recording it. Uh, our singer Dave has a beautiful voice, and uh, he's got that on there. Um, Jay Ulrich plays the bass on it. Brendan Cauley plays a melodic guitar throughout that echoes the vocals and sort of plays with the vocals. I play the rhythm and uh, play a little slide guitar on it. And we've got Joe Scott on the drums. So what you just heard was just me doing it, and it was strictly the radio acoustic version, and it was not what it's going to sound like on the EP. Still sounds very good. Thank you. You're welcome. So what is the most difficult part about playing in a band, and how do you address that issue? Oh, we've all got to get together at the same time. And uh, I think right now we're really finding that easy. And one thing that makes it really easy, which couldn't have happened back when I was in punk bands, was the smartphone can put us all in contact with each other immediately, and we can all, like, you know, text each other makes it so much easier. Uh, but communication on when you're going to get together. We have a rehearsal studio uh, down near uh, United Center, and uh, I think it kind of helps that we have a refrigerator with some refrigerated pops in there for us as a band to uh, enjoy the time and to think of it as a, a point of relaxation. And we get to keep our equipment up in there all the time. Uh, that helps a lot, too, knowing that we have a place to go to. It saves a lot of transportation time. Yes. Yeah, and we're out of the garage. We're still a garage band, but we're <laughs> out of a garage. <laughs> what is the most satisfying thing about playing in a band? You know, I, there's something special about collaboration. I, I see it in a theater rehearsal room. I see it uh, in, in Marvel at it when I see a great plays production. But um, it's not different with any time you're collaborating, whether it's, you know, putting the, you know, uh, the chores together in a house um, on a prairie uh, and being in in Congress with each other. But with music, it's just super, super productive for our, our brains. They, they just go on so alert when we're playing together that no matter what happened that day and all the other things that might have, you know, been wearing on my shoulders and all the things I've got to get done, once we kick into that first song, uh, there's an elevation, there's a lightness, there's a, um, uh, what was once a uh, heavy lead turns into helium inside my brain. That's beautiful. That's material, so, uh, that's material for a song, I think. <laughs> the helium. Maybe song with a little helium voice, huh? So please give uh, students and our listeners advice about playing in a band. 
and the balance between work and pursuing a music career? Well, you've got to, you can't work for work. You've got to work for something and for all the joys and other pleasures that you have in life. And if you find yourself loving music and learning to perform it, put yourself out there, find others and take those steps to bond with them and know that it's not about you achieving glory or fame. It's about you finding people that you're like-minded with and enjoy spending time with and making sound with. How many years did it take you to find your band, to find all the members of your band? Oh, all my life, I guess, huh? Because this, uh, right now with Dave singing with us and uh, it's been only about a year, a little bit over a year that we've been together, or right about a year. This, this, this EP will be the first thing recorded with, by us with Dave. And when could we expect it? On, uh, the finished product. On Saturday, June 8th, we're playing at the Montrose Saloon at 9 p.m. And that's going to be our EP rele release. Uh, Montrose Saloon's on Montrose, just a little bit east of the river, east of Lincoln Square Center. And uh, it's a great, great bar for great live music. I love the way uh, that bar is really making live music. And many other bars in Chicago are making live music a priority and uh, I think it's going to help create a really great music scene here in Chicago. And we're kind of excited to be putting our little two cents worth in there, too. But uh, so the game plan is on Saturday, June 8th, we'll have our EP release. Okay. And this Saturday you'll be playing at the... Uh, at the no, this is uh, Saturday, June 8th. Okay. This is uh, a couple months ahead. Mm -hmm. So we've got time to finish the mixing of the songs this week. And then there's a process called mastering. Mm -hmm. That is uh, what is the final stages of how the sound will look and be shaped for us. Wonderful. Well, good luck to you, Vincent, and thank you thank so you. much for coming on our program today. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. This is The Wizard, WZRD Chicago 88.3 FM.